Okay, so this is our fourth example in chapter nine, and hopefully we are starting to see the overall flow of the problem. So I'm just gonna jump right into it. The first thing we wanna do is draw the real picture. That's the one that's on our slides already, but it is always useful to kind of put it right into our notes or the problem that we're working on so that we can refer back to it and label things as we need to. So it's a four kilogram board it's also four meters long, and there's a block that we've placed on top of it. That's really the only thing that's different about this example compared to the previous one. So after that real picture, which is just kind of putting the um, general perspective um, onto our page, we want to look at the forces. So we're going to draw a force diagram or free body diagram of the board. So it's all of the forces acting on that board. So we have two different supports. So I labeled them one and two so that we can have force one and force two. Those are both pushing up on the board. We have this block that's pushing down on it. So we have the FG and we'll call it of the block or whatever we've put onto it. And that's mg of the block, which here is 3 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. And so that's 29.4 newtons. And we have the force of gravity of the board itself, which is mg, but in this case it's 4 times 9.8. And so that's 39.2 newtons we will be using those two forces in the torque diagram. And that torque diagram is the third thing that we draw. And as usual, if you're starting to feel like you've got the hang of this, pause the video and try it on your own, uh, at least to set up the torque diagram and see where we might um, agree or disagree. And for this one, just so that we continue to see different choices for the um, axis. I've already chosen it one time it was on the left side, one time it was on the right side, and so for this one, for the axis, I am going to choose it to be at support number one, just so that we see what this whole situation looks like if the axis isn't at the end. It's not any more complicated, we just have to be aware of the distances to the axis that we choose. Okay, so the first force that we get to going from left to right is the three kilogram block, which is a 29.4 Newton force. And while I'm here, I'm gonna write down um, the distance to the axis that we chose. And if we look at our slide, our picture, we have been given that distance of 0.7 meters. As I continue along, this is a force, it's the support one, but because it's a force at the axis, I don't draw anything. I keep going and I'm going to get to the force of the board, which is 39.2 newtons. And that force I'm going to put up here, we need to do a little bit of math for. We know that this distance in the picture is 0.9, and we know that halfway to the board is 2 meters, halfway to the center. And so the distance from the axis to the center is 2 minus 0.9, or 1.1 meters. We'll notice that one of the big reasons why we start to recognize the difference between the torque diagram and the real picture is nowhere on our slide did the number 1.1 meter show up. We have to be thinking about all the different pieces that were given and how we can get the distance to the axis that we've picked. And then we keep going and the last force that's here is this one, the force from support two and the distance from the axis all the way out to that support. The whole board is four meters. This is 0.9 meters from the end. And so instead of four meters away, it is four minus 0.9 or 3.1 meters away from the axis that we chose. And if you chose to put the axis over here at the end, the forces, the supports are still separated by 3.1 meters, no matter where that axis is for the pair. Okay, so step one, the board, step two, the axis, step three, the forces, and step four, the distances. 
Step five is choosing clockwise and counterclockwise. And again, we have to know where that axis is. If I am down but on the left side of the axis, in order to try to circle it, I go out and around like this, and that is a counterclockwise torque. If I'm down but on the right side of the axis, in order to be able to circle it, I have to go down and around the other direction, which in this case would be clockwise. So down versus up does not tell us clockwise and counterclockwise. We need to make sure that we are actually thinking about if this is the only arrow trying to make a circle around the axis, which way is that circle gonna go? And then for F2, we have it go up, but it's on the right side of the axis, it goes up and around, and so that is also a counterclockwise torque. So for the first time, and certainly not the last, we're starting to ramp up our difficulty, we have three different torques to um, work with, but it's the same overall equation. Clockwise torques equal counterclockwise torques. So that's the um, condition for equilibrium. And we look, and there is only one clockwise torque, so we can write that one down. 39.2 times the distance for it is 1.1, 1.1. .1, 1.1. So this force and that distance, so we've dealt with that clockwise torque. And then there are two counterclockwise torques. So we will take the 29.4 Newton force times the 0.7 meter distance. Plus, we just have to add up all of the other ones the same way that we have F1 plus F2 and we're adding up forces. To add up torques, we have our unknown force two acting a distance 3.1 from the axis. So let's calculate these um, terms so that we can simplify this a bit. So on the left, we have 43.12. The first term on the right is 20.58. And then the unknown force times 3.1, we can write 3.1 F2. Okay, so I'm going to subtract 20.58 from both sides, minus 20.58. Okay, and so we're going to get, and I'm going to change uh, colors back to red so we can see the difference here. So we have... 22.54 equals 3.1 F2. We will divide both sides by 3.1. And so we will get F2 is equal to 7.27 newtons. Now let's think about what uh, support two looks like over here. This is the force over on this back um, end of the board. If we imagine setting this problem up, and if you've got blocks or anything around that you can set this problem up with at home, that's a great thing to do. What you will be able to recognize is if you put this block a little bit too far out, the board will actually tip. So the fact that we have a very small force way out here is just telling us that it is more likely that the board is going to tip around this uh, more central support uh, and that there's not a whole lot of force that's coming specifically from this back support rather than the more centralized one. So I'm going to lift it up just a bit in case we didn't see that um, those steps. With more terms, there's slightly more math but the process is still the same. There's only one unknown in that equation, and so we solved for it. Okay, so for space up here, I'm gonna write the second condition, or the other condition, technically it's the first, the other condition for equilibrium. And so that's F net equals zero. That's the other condition for equilibrium. So if we look at our forces, all of the forces up will choose to be positive 
and all of the forces down, individually we will choose to be negative. So minus 29.4 minus 39.2 equals zero. Okay, so F2 we already have a number for. So F1 is our unknown, plus 7.27. Those two we can have, if they're both negative, then we're subtracting off one big negative number. It helps if I type it properly, 68.6. .6. Okay, so we can add 68.6 .6 to both sides. We can subtract off 7.27. And we will get that F1 is equal to 61.33 newtons. And we can probably um, round that to only be 61.3 newtons as our final answer. And so we see that that more centralized force uh, support is providing more force. It is the thing that's kind of making sure that the board doesn't fall down onto the table or rotate um, due to those weights. So this problem has the same overall process. I had to erase the initial picture for space, but we drew the picture, we drew the force diagram, we drew the torque diagram, we used the condition for static equilibrium for torque, and then because we still had another unknown, we used the other condition for static equilibrium, F net equals zero. This process is the same every single time. The most common mistakes that I see students make are if we don't spend enough time kind of recognizing that these distances have to be relative to the axis, we might just plug in 0.7 and 0.9 and 4, just hoping that they are the right numbers without realizing what those numbers are trying to tell us. It's the distance to the axis that we care about for torque, not just a number value in meters in the problem. All right. I will see you in the next one.